Arden, he was aware of what the, the tricks. So he said, why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. So they bring, bring him a denarius, the ancient Roman coin. And so Jesus says to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? They said Caesar. So Jesus says, therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. What does that actually mean today? It, okay, what it would mean today is, like, don't uh, just keep your own mind clear of what's going on and don't get bogged down in all these games that they're playing. Like, uh, All right, that's one way to look at it. Thank you. He was separating church from state, actually. Jesus separated church from state. He didn't say they were one and the same. He said there's a state and then there's God. They're not one and the same thing. Now, unfortunately, in Iowa... They were blended together, and that I took umbrage with that, to be very honest with you. KSFO, Michael, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yes, I'm a, I'm a gay man, and two weeks ago I was in San Francisco on the corner of Market and Divisadero in my car eating noodles, and I was out there uh, getting pictures developed. And I'd like to say that um, I do support Donald Trump because... He's the only one that I think that can protect us above anyone else. And this is the reason why. As I was sitting there eating my noodles, this, and I'm a gay man, so I'm not being prejudiced, this so-called gay man was walking by me, totally nude, with only a sock on his you-know-what. There was a young baby, about maybe two years old, looked like an angel, and her mother was beside her. Now, I'm not going to kill this man for doing what he did and walking by this um, this child nude, exercising his so-called gay rights. But I, how do you know? He, how do you know the nude man was gay? Hello. How how do you know the nude man was gay? I know. That's what I expected someone to say. <laughs> I, I can't convince No, no, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm really not following you. I, how would you know a naked man is gay? Did he say he was? I'll put it this way. I'm a registered nurse for 25 years. I'm not dumb as a bar of soap. I've been gay all, all my life. And this man, I mean, a lot of people would say, oh, you can't say he's gay because he could be mentally ill. He could be straight because, you know, and, and mentally ill, too. This man was not. All right, what you're saying is it doesn't matter what his sexuality was. The, the, you were offended by a naked man walking by in the city streets of San Francisco. Isn't that the essence of it? Well, I was offended, and I'm a gay, and I'm a gay man. And, and from a medical point of view, I wouldn't want to eat my noodles anywhere else because I'm afraid of where else he would be sitting down where I would sit down. Oh, I see. You were eating in the car. No, San Francisco is a is a toxic bombshell waiting to explode. There's a, a lax public health. There's no public health uh, uh, maintenance in the city. The hygiene is in the garbage. You've got people urinating, defecating in the streets. I'm sorry. It's ugly. It's ugly, and it's because of a lax, a breakdown fundamentally of the city's structure. So what is your main point politically, though, uh, Michael? What's your main point? Yeah, my main point is this, Michael, is that this man should be prosecuted, but because he's not being prosecuted, it's because he's exercising his gay rights. Nancy Pelosi would not go after this man and prosecute him because she's afraid of the backlash from the human rights, so-called gay, whatever, whatever. Did you call her nasty Pelosi? Well, <laughs> my point is is this. My, my final point, Michael, is that I'm not going to kill this man that did that, but ISIS will. And All right, no, I hear what you're saying. I think what you're saying is as a gay man, you're frightened of ISIS as you should be. And your candidate, the strongest candidate in your mind is who? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Who in your mind can actually defeat ISIS and keep them off America's streets most effectively? Which candidate? Donald Trump. All right. Well, that's what I've been saying. I don't think this is the first time you've listened to my show, is it? I listen to you occasionally, and I, I agree with you about 99.9% .9 of the time. I like so, that. I, I, I like that very much. That's very sweet of you. Thanks. I'll be back in a minute.
California Highway Patrol officer was stabbed in the neck and other places in San Francisco by a homeless, filthy bum living under a freeway ramp. You progressives just stabbed the cop in the neck. You should be proud of yourself. You should be real proud of yourself. Essex and Harrison Street, bum under the ramp, stabs him in the neck, and rushed to the hospital. That's all. That's because you've encouraged them. Ah, he was taken into custody. Yeah, sure. Taken into custody. A mile from the festivities taking place at Super Bowl City. A large knife and a black backpack was seen on the ground in the parking lot behind police tape. You see, this is where the bums live. They live under a freeway because of the city's policies. And uh, the cops went in there to clean it up a little bit. And they, gave, they stabbed the cop in the neck and in the arm. And uh, he'll be fine, though. Maybe Obama can invite the uh, the homeless bum who stabbed the cop into the White House, or he can give him an award, or perhaps he can get to meet Al Sharpton. If he, it, it, it even possible that uh, he could be made an honorary attorney general for a day. After all, this is the official policy. This is the day after Loretta Lynch of the attorney general's office announced that they're going to start investigating the SFPD for doing too good a job. You hear this on minorities. All of the innocent minorities, they're arrested. They're arrested only because of their race, not because they committed a crime, according to Loretta Lynch. When they won't identify the stabber, by the way, no pictures. There are 500 pictures in the local paper, not one of the stabber. Not one. It doesn't meet the, uh, you know, let us say the protocols of the newspaper. What else do we have in the news? Sarah Palin interview again. She was seen scurrying out of uh, Iowa after the loss fleeing back to to Alaska. I don't know who she's blaming for that one. I I thought it was a mistake for him to pick her, by the way. I thought it was an error. But, uh, you know, there's a whole you can analyze it a hundred different ways. Others say by attacking Ben Carson, he drove the Carson voters into the uh, uh Rubio camp, not into his uh you know there's a lot of reasons. He made a couple of mistakes. There's no question about it. But again it's an anomaly. It's not the whole country. It's different than most of the country in so many ways that I don't have to analyze it over and over and over again. But I really am tired of the Bible involved in the, in the election. You know, keep the Bible to yourself. Now, you know, someone said to me, but you mentioned the Bible on the show. Yeah, but I'm not a politician. I'm not running for office. If I read the Bible, it's because it fits some part of the show. It's not to win a vote. When you go into an evangelical state waving a Bible, don't tell me that's not cynical. It's very cynical. And, and it's making me a little nervous, by the way, a lot nervous. KSFO, Dana, how do you feel about that, about the Bible and the, and the religion being waved around in Iowa? Why Cruz? Okay, why Cruz is hating, hating on Russia? Because of end times, it says in Ezekiel and Revelation that um, Gog is going to come down um, and fight against Israel in the last war. Um, and it says something about the bear. And we're not even mentioned in the United States. Kind of like... So you think, what, you think Cruz is simply referring to Gog and Magog in the Bible, and that's what he's basing his politics on? That's part of it. Part of it. Oh, God, we're really in trouble. Oh, are we really in trouble? If he's referring to the Old Testament for his policy decisions, we're in bigger trouble than I think. I thought it was based on the neocon advisors in the think tanks, not on Gog and Magog. A lot of evangelical Christians believe that Putin is actually the Antichrist. Oh, my well, God. If he's in that camp... He's the Antichrist, and how come he's the ones taking on ISIS? How does that work? Because he's supposed to be trickery, and he'll be... Oh, everything's a trick. You know. Everything's a trick. To well, be a you know, that, that borders on the, on the way that uh, the fundamentalist Muslims look at the world, by the way. You know, this is what worries me. This is extremely worrisome, that the radical Islamists want to bring about a world war, and they want to bring about Armageddon, because they believe that only upon the destruction of the world will the Mahdi return, the M-E-H-D-I, and bring about peace on earth. It's a similar fable to that that the fundamentalist Christians believe. You do know that, don't you? No. No, I wasn't. No, I didn't. Well, I, okay, I, I mean, at, at the risk of offending 90% of my audience, I have to tell you it's quite worrisome to see an overlap in the fanatical beliefs of both extremist groups. At the risk of my audience, you know, but I, I got to go bare to the wall, you know, 
pedal to the metal here. I am so sick and tired of... You know what the problem is? Is that you want me to say to you what you think I should be saying to you, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to say what I think needs to be said. I don't like polit I don't like religion and politics. I never did. I don't like a theocracy. I don't want to live in a religious state. I like my nation. I like it real well. I like being left alone. I don't want to have a religion forced down my throat every two minutes with, with hail this and praise God and every two seconds. It gives me the shudders. You know, I go on my Facebook page. You should see the hatred from the so-called nice uh, religious people because I don't go along with the program. All right, you raised the very interesting. I didn't know that that's part of the reason. I'm not going to just go along with the, the program here. Let's see. Cruz, Carson, Republicans, Democrats, Trump coming in second. Now they don't like me because I talked about religion yesterday. Now I'm not a real conservative anymore. Oh, how dare you? You're a Berkeley-educated Marin County liberal with a toy dog. That's bad? I mean, earning a Ph.D. from Berkeley is bad? Living in Marin County is evil? Having a toy poodle is, is, makes me a bad person? What, do you want me to have an attack dog like a homeless person? What, what's wrong with you idiots? How can you think that way? I'm not listening to you. I'm dropping a show. How dare you? How dare you attack Cruz on the Bible? You're a phony. You're a Berkeley-educated Marin County liberal with a toy dog. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. My friend, if that's what you base your decisions on, then you are in serious trouble. You're very seriously sick. Listening after 10 years, I'm never listening again. Uh, I was left on hold for 20 minutes before the show went off, and, you're, and he insults my call screener. They were mad at my call screen. Not everyone gets on a radio show just because you call. Okay, they're mad at me because I'm a, I have a PhD from Berkeley that I earn and that I live in a, in a nice area and that I have a toy dog. That suddenly makes me uh, someone to not be trusted. What a sick, sick world I live in. People are so mean. What a mean-spirited group of people are out there. They have no brains and they uh, make decisions based upon stereotypes they don't like my dog what kind of dog is a conservative supposed to have robert is there a, is there a litmus test now for conservatives like an authentic conservative does not have a toy poodle what should i do euthanize teddy because it doesn't meet your uh, your views of a conservative dog you moron you what should i get an attack dog or get, maybe i should get a working dog that pulls a cart that, that, that would be a conservative dog some mastiff that pulls a cart somewhere in the alps you know, that, that would make, make you feel I'm a real conservative because I'm a mastiff. No, I like a toy poodle. He's a nice guy, nice dog. I don't even know my dog's politics nor his religion. To be honest with you, it's one of the reasons I like my dog because I don't think he has politics nor a religion. To be frank, it's a relief to not have to even think about it. And I am nursing him back to health, so be nice to him for God's sakes. He had his teeth removed. Okay, where shall we go here? Shall I read from the Bible for the next 30 minutes to please you? I can do that. Maybe I should just um, appease the, uh, the real conservatives out there, the Bible thumpers. I can start with Genesis, page 1, to show that I'm authentic. So I can start with, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now the earth was unformed and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. See, that's my Bible. It's right here. With 500 to 1,000 post-its in it. I don't need you to tell me what I believe. I don't need you to ask me whether I believe in God. I don't think there's a litmus test for talk radio. If you want somebody more fanatical, I'm sure you could find it. Every day of the week, there's plenty of fanatics. There's many Christian stations you can listen to. Now, what, I don't need a litmus test because I live in Marin County and I have a Ph.D. from Berkeley and I have a toy poodle. You know how stupid the conservatives are becoming? All I said was Cruz is a fool for hating Russia. It's the stupidest policy position of all that he has. How in the world can he hope to be elected when Putin has such a high popularity in America because of what he's done against ISIS? Who was advising Cruz is all I said. And my answer was the neocons who got us into the Iraq war twice. The very same, I can name them. They're locked out of the political structure. They're in these little old think tanks in Washington. They make bad money. They're not invited anywhere. 
They're not even invited to the, to the National Review to give speeches anymore. 